I always believe that developing the right talents, developing the right mindsets and culture in any organization is your true safety net. Welcome everyone to another episode of the podcast. Today I'm your host Shayma Alawati and I'm very pleased to have with me here Ahmed Al Askawi, OQ Chief Executive Upstream. Ahmed is responsible of exploration production and the gas network. His career in oil and gas started in 1997 as a petroleum engineer, where he worked in gas fields, oil, light oil, heavy oil, and enhanced oil recovery. Later, he moved to executive roles in oil and gas sector as well as logistics sector. He is a physics graduate with a master's degree in petroleum engineering. Welcome, Ahmed. Thank you, Shema. So, can you give me an overview of what is meant by upstream in OQ? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for uh, receiving me here today. And um, it's an interesting time for the upstream business. There's the traditional definition of upstream, which was very much um, associated with the exploration and production activities, mm -hmm. and also the transportation of produced fluids from the wells to various locations, such as facilities, or the gas network is another example. Okay. So traditionally, upstream business was very much, again, associated with exploration, production, and transportation of fluids. Certain areas of upstream have become uh, of prominent importance and very much related to protecting our environment. So to be more specific, carbon capture, um, energy efficiency um, have also been seen as areas that any upstream business has to start looking into and taking on board very seriously for the upstream oil and gas business to remain uh, in the future and to be able to compete with other clean energy sources. Great, great. So how does that link to OQ's um, overall strategy? So um, OQ, as any other company, evolves mm -hmm. to be able to remain at the cutting edge of its industry. OQ has been an energy company in the past, although uh, we were historically known as Oman Oil Company, um, Orpic prior to that, so very much related to uh, fossil fuels. Moving forward, we are a lot more of an energy company. Uh, in addition to that, we've restructured to become a strategic management company. And I'll come to talk about the culture that is required to make that happen later. Okay. But first, I'd like to explain what is a strategic management company and how does the upstream play a role in that. So what we have evolved to become what we are today is a result of the experience that has been built by the different companies within the group and also the uh, developments around the world with respect to um, hydrogen, alternative energies and so on. So we've created a company that capitalizes on the, I would say, on the large scale of our activities in the different supply chain, mm -hmm. starting from production, refining, petrochemicals and alternative energy. At the same time, maintaining the flexibility and the agility of smaller businesses. So we have three business units, which is upstream, downstream and commercial, and we have the alternative energy business unit. Each one of these business units will move forward into the future and they will support each other in order for OQ to maintain a strong position globally when it comes to the energy mix. In the upstream specifically, while we will continue our activities with respect to exploration and production, we will continue looking for international partners to come and join us here in Oman to explore and produce more oil. We will also continue and put strong emphasis on energy efficiency and decarbonization. By doing that, we would allow to prolong the life of our oil fields. We will also um, allow to have a robust and stronger cash flow in the future. This cash flow will obviously help OQ as a company to move into other sources of energy and also other projects of the future, such as hydrogen and alternative energy. Very well explained. Thank you so much. So we did come a long way and um, I believe we passed throughout a lot of challenges and achievements. 
Today, I think we are celebrating achievements and there are some recent achievements that we would like to know and shed some light on. Indeed, and to celebrate today's achievements, uh, we need to kind of explain uh, what is that that we have achieved today that is a little bit different from what was achieved in the past. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, OQ uh, succeeded in exploration and production through its uh, JV partners and um, various government entities were also strong supporters of uh, this success in OQ. Uh, well, we have to date six uh, producing blocks. In each of these blocks, we have international partners. We also have about five uh, blocks that are in an exploration stage, again, with partners. Okay. What makes this achievement in Block 60 specifically something that we feel very proud of is because this is the only block that was explored, uh, developed, and is being operated by OQ. The other area that we feel very proud of is the fact that initially it was a gas block, so it was gas mainly being produced from this particular block, and then later with the, um, with the finding and um, exploration and appraisal of Bisat, Bisat has become the uh, major producing field that we have at the moment, producing around 50,000 barrels of oil per day, with uh, ambitious targets to uh, go to 60,000 by the end of 2022 and hopefully beyond that uh, depending on the various studies that we are doing. Uh, the story doesn't stop there with respect to Block 60. We have intentions to go back to some of the uh, old exploration activities that were carried out and some of the data that we have, reassess it given these uh, the success that we've seen in Bisat and see what extra is there in this block that was probably overlooked in the past. Mm. So all in all, with the production level that we've achieved so far, which is um, around 218,000 barrels of oil per day, it does position OQ in Oman as being one of the largest producers out of the 218,000 barrel of oil equivalent, around 50,000 barrel of oil per day is being operated by OQ at very competitive unit operating cost, excellent HSC records, and a lot of staff development that took place. That is something that we feel very proud of. And with it, we also have a very clear plan to start measuring our emissions and to look at different ways to start going for carbon capture or rather reducing our carbon emissions. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. While you were talking, I, I just uh, remembered because I come from the sustainability background. So um, and with an oil and gas sector and upstream, health and safety is a very important pillar. Can you tell us, because I understand that there has been a lot of efforts there and especially during COVID-19, there has been some challenges there. Can you shed more light or tell us more about the efforts of the team uh, in upstream on this aspect? Indeed. So COVID uh, came with its uh, challenges and uh, Alhamdulillah, we've uh, overcome those uh, challenges. But it also taught us a lot of things that have made us stronger. In fact, as we built the new operating model for OQ, mm -hmm. being a strategic management company, we also took the learnings of COVID into account by looking at how can we ensure that our cash flows in the future could be robust in such eventualities, whether faced with pandemics or faced with global warming, which could be another um, uh, challenge that we will face in the future. Uh, if we look at the amount of storms that we've been getting here in Oman and other indications that global warming is something that is around the corner and Indeed. some of the um, effects of global warming are things that we witness today, it does actually make you think every time you start a project, how can I ensure the sustainability of this project in the long run? It's no longer, most of our projects are investments of a few hundred millions or a few billion dollars. Some have high return rates, some have longer return rates, and you really have to start looking at sustainability when you start investing in such projects. Yes, I agree. In that front, I must say that environment was not something that was overlooked by the oil and gas in the past. Um, our indicators always, or KPIs, always had HSE, and environment was there. Historically, uh, the focus has been on the health and safety because it was closer to our hearts and the impact or rather the reaction from the environment to what we do in our business was probably not so strongly felt in the past. Yes. It is strongly felt now. 
It is something that we have to, if I were to uh, boldly start changing things around, you could say that we've made uh, drastic improvements when it comes to health and safety. Of course, there's a lot more that we can do, but uh, in terms of focus, we may need to focus on the environment now a little bit more for our own sake uh, in this planet and also for the sake of our business that we run. Indeed, indeed. And when we say focus areas under sustainability, so it is a balance between environmental, social, as well as economical and governance. And I think you rightly put it uh, in a very balanced way. Uh, definitely, definitely. And uh, I would be eager to know more about um, the future plans in that direction. But now, uh, tell me from your point of view, what are the catalysts of the success in the future for, for Upstream in Oman? I always believe that um, developing the right talents, developing the right mindsets and culture in any organization is your true safety net. It's also your true test of robustness on whether you'll be able to meet future changes in any business. Yeah. So I, I believe that uh, people come first. Indeed. Yeah. We really have to continue developing the professionals of the future. Uh, if I go back to the oil industry, when, we, when it first started many years ago, there were no specializations such as petroleum engineering, which I studied. Oil and gas was produced by people who had talent. They were creative, uh, the pure need for energy. Yeah. And it took many years until other disciplines started coming together and finding the most kind of creative and the most technologically advanced methods of producing oil in the safest way, in the most cost effective way. That superimposed on the energy of the future. Again, you need to develop people who could also, you know, teach themselves, who could be reskilled, um, who are also creative. To, uh, to be able to overcome any challenges that uh, will face us in the future. So um, that comes first, developing your people, your human capital. Okay. And the second is the environment that people live in, right? So uh, we have to take care of the environment and the environment will take care of us, right? Um, those two things are seen as key pillars for any sustainable success in the future. 100%, I couldn't agree more. And um, I echo you. I think um, developing people or focusing on people is very important because whenever we, we talk about the future of any company, you can spend a lot of money on systems and uh, you know technology. But if your people are not ready and they are not maturing enough and trying to understand the changes that are happening around them, then yeah. we we get to. Uh, hence, behind. hence, hence, um, you know, hence why we created the new OQ culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. because it's well known that uh, change and strategies and what have you can't be realized without having the right culture that goes with it. Definitely right, and uh, certain cultures are not written. They are practiced. So uh, continue, you know, leading by example, you know, pushing people to perform, caring for them. These are all the things that we really want to embed in our culture in OQ for us to sustain our business. And that is a key focus area that went together and in parallel with the uh, strategic uh, management company model. That is very beautiful note to end a beautiful, constructive conversation between us. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed al Askawi, for this wonderful interview. If you have any more comments to mention. No, thank you very much for welcoming me to this. And I hope I've, uh, I've managed to clarify and make things clear to uh, everyone. I've tried to keep it simple so that it reaches as many people as possible. I hope that too. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Take care.